This is Cubaris species Panda King. Some isopods in the hobby have imaginative names, and Panda King is no exception. Although this isopod has an undeniably striking pattern, and I can see where the idea for the name comes from, it's a bit of a stretch. Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here, and today's video is a species profile of Cubaris species Panda King. This Southeast Asian isopod is usually gray with a pale band in the center, although there are some that look a little different. For now, this isopod has been placed into the Cubaris genus, though that may change, and the only common name for this isopod that I've ever heard is Panda King. This is not a large isopod. Most sources give a maximum length of around one centimeter, or sometimes slightly larger. As far as variants go, there's the wild type, and then an orange form known as red panda. Again, the resemblance to red pandas is vague at best, but the name is pretty catchy, so let's go with it. This is one of the most prolific species in what is currently considered the Cubaris genus. Though they dart away pretty quickly when I lift up pieces of bark in the Panda King enclosure, I see lots of babies of different sizes. I'm not sure of the average brood size, but many Cubaris seem to produce frequently every month or so, and the Panda King seems to follow that rule. I suspect that brood size is larger than that of rubber duckies, as the panda kings seem to reproduce much faster. Before I go into the husbandry of Cubara species panda king, I'd like to thank my patrons on patreon.com. I discovered a long time ago that learning about the fascinating creatures of planet Earth, and then sharing what I learned with you, brings me a great deal of joy. Patreon helps allow me to do both of those things, so thank you to everyone who is or has been a patron. Pledges start at just one US dollar per month. If you'd like to help ensure that I keep making content about interesting creatures, you can visit patreon.com and search for Aquarimax Pets, or just click the link at the end of this video or in the description. And now on to Panda King husbandry, which is pretty simple. You may start with the standard six quart bin, knowing that you will eventually need to upgrade or split the colony due to its fairly quick reproduction. This species does burrow, especially when disturbed, and a deeper substrate, two or more inches, tends to be a good choice with Cubaris species, followed by another inch or so of leaf litter. Most Cubaris appreciate good ventilation, but they also seem to prefer that much of the substrate be slightly moist, though never soggy. Remember that humidity and airflow in the room in which you keep your isopods will help determine exactly how much ventilation you will need. It's fine to provide a moisture gradient, for your Cubara species panda king, but keeping the dry side fairly small seems to be a good idea with panda kings, as they really, really don't do well if they get close to drying out. This species seems to do fine at normal room temperatures. The low temperatures on winter nights in my animal room are around 65 Fahrenheit or 18.3 C. Since panda kings come from a tropical part of the world, I would expect it to be more cold sensitive than some isopods from temperate regions, so don't allow them to get too chilly. Provide lots of hides for your panda kings in various sizes. I use a couple of different types of bark and rotting wood in mine. They also seem to spend a lot of time hiding under the leaf litter. As far as food is concerned, in addition to a base substrate rich in organic matter with a top dressing of leaf litter, I offer my pandas plenty of bamboo. No wait, wrong pandas. Uh, I give them supreme isopod chow, bits of vegetable items such as squash, sweet potato, and green beans, as well as occasional fish food pellets. I've never tried keeping Cubaris panda kings as part of a cleanup crew. But as far as Cubaris go, they probably aren't the worst choice to try in a fairly humid vivarium, as, like I mentioned, they breed quickly once well established. They do tend to burrow a fair bit, and thus they might have a decent chance at maintaining a population even with some predation pressure. If you have tried this species as a cleanup crew, let me know how it went down in the comments. So now let's evaluate this species for its pet and display potential. It is a fairly small species of isopod and definitely not the boldest, though you will likely see a lot more of them once the population booms. They seem to be hardy eaters and I will sometimes see them gathered around the feeding area, though they do tend to scatter when disturbed. The contrasting pattern and its prolific nature are probably the two major points in its favor. It's pretty reasonably priced for a Cubaris species as well. So, if you want a hardy and prolific species, and you want to get your feet wet with Cubaris, 
but you aren't ready to shell out the big bucks for the rubber ducks, Panda Kings could be a great candidate. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video. And if you feel like you need a little bit more isopod content in your day, here is a growing playlist of isopod species profiles you can check out. I also have a lot of other isopod content on my channel as well as content about all kinds of creatures that you can keep in an aquarium or vivarium.